Hello, welcome to this continuing dialogue. Um, so the let's do introductions, starting with a good representative Long. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Rick Long. I represent District Nine, which is all of Southern Rusick and Northern Knoxville County. Good afternoon, my name is Melissa Walsh and I represent District 107, the town of Yarmouth. Good afternoon, I'm Jim Barker, District 18, which is part of Bangor, part of Hornwell, and the town of Easy. And I just wanted to check out that about 115, I've been running out for 15 minutes or so. Hopefully, we're done by then. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Denise Harlow. I represent District 116, which is part of Portland. Bob DeJane, House District 13, just part of the town. And Jim Hamper, District 100, McKenna Falls, Otisfield, Oxford. Hi, John. Way down here. <laughs> 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 District On the right. 46, Camden, Rockford. Top Savvy of the Senate District 18, all of Franklin County except one town, and of course, Park Somerset. Uh, John, we had a few queries. John, yes. just, I think we're, we, there were a few things that Bob sent you yep. by email. Um, and I guess, and if there are quick questions that we might have, questions that we had, and we'll make them quick. So, you know, Senator Goodall, I think you all know, is in the process, hopefully, having Grace here pretty soon. I tried to get him the name of Thomas, but he said it was a girl. <laughs> so I tried Thomasina, and it didn't go well. So our, all our thoughts, if Seth, if you happen to be listening, just know that our thoughts are with you. Yeah, that's, that's what he's doing. Don't have Seth, Seth, it's Tom. Let's pray for a healthy baby. That's all. Sorry, it's, 30, it's, it's uh, 34 weeks, so it's early. So, but uh, he felt pretty good, at least in the two emails that I got from him this morning. So, um, all right. There were a couple things I think represented to Shane. You might share those publicly so that people can hear them and then John can respond to us. Yes, thank you very much, Senator. Uh, I did email uh, Ms. Ruggiero a couple of questions. Section 1.2, uh, 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 or Section 2 of Section 1, uh, is about the acquisition agreement must provide that a current owner uh, gets to use this afterwards, uh, after we sell it. Um, I asked the question, okay, does this obligate us in any way to keep this landfill operating uh, if, if we decide the best thing to do is close it down? Right. Well, I think we're going to negotiate that as part of the uh, terms of the acquisition agreement. So I yeah. think we're going to... But I guess you would probably negotiate this, but I don't want to put it in the statute saying we must right. offer this. <laughs> and then you're stuck... Yeah, to take it out. Yeah. Take it out, okay. Okay, so on that, Susan, no, take it out. Take out that whole subsection. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Certainly, you can negotiate that later, but you're yeah, not legally obligated to do so at this point. And I guess on uh, part four of that, um, I raised the issue about the Citizen Advisory Committee, and I, I know that I think uh, Carlin McLean probably drafted this based on what's currently in statute and what we did in Old Town. Um, but this is a slightly different situation. Is that the old the landfill that's currently there right now has been operating the same way for a long time. Hasn't had a committee. Nothing is expected to change there uh, to create a committee when there's no actual change in operation or ownership. <coughs> Our waste streams or anything doesn't necessarily raise us to the level where there has to be additional community uh, activity with it, I think. Once we get to the point where we may want to have a different operator or, or larger issues come into play because we're importing new waste streams, maybe then is the time to consider whether there should be an additional committee to to give the citizens input on this. Do you think it should be, should say exactly what you said though? If the ownership changes, if the responsibility and use changes, then this yeah, yeah. Right now, all we're really contemplating is the state gets it, and then we keep treating the leachate. And, and, and I guess, but I'm saying, don't take four out, but change the language yeah. around four to say that if this changes, then the operations so changes, the owners change, yeah. the yeah. waste streams change, then this will fix the rather than uh, try to come in here and do it after the fact. Yeah, yeah. I, my experience is it's difficult to get landfill advisory committees to work the way we really hope they will, but it can be done and should be done, and it is done in other states. Mm -hmm. Representative. We had a little pruner discussion here, but something that is not in here and I think has to be in there is some way to tie in that wastewater treatment plant to protect the town. In other words, <coughs> we can't negotiate that away and then all of a sudden have the town have to face some major cost for the buyer. So somehow, and I know he mentioned they're working on the negotiation, but 
I don't believe the statute was something we have to protect. One of the things that I talked to Susan a little bit about and afterwards the other day is that we have come up with a list of concerns that may not really fit into the statute. Yeah. And that what we may want to do is write a letter to John and so that everybody brainstorm out your concerns and we'll form them into one letter. So that he has this to go, but so we're documented somewhere saying these concerns. For example, one of the things I'd like to have, John, is on a monthly basis, you send an email out to the committee to update how things are going, what's going on. Because then if we don't, let's say, don't come together until sure. September for some yeah, reason, at least, we're at least. On all, and that way if you all have questions that are happening, you're already getting an automatic update. You can ask those questions rather than have to wait until, well, by the way, here's all the information since I wish I'd known. So that's like my one thing I'd like to have in there. <coughs> Uh, but before, that would be a good way to solve my problem. The other things on item, uh, item five, we talked about this, but we don't want the word shell in there. We want that change. Right. right. We'll five. authorize item it. Five. Item, one. Oh, item one. Item one. Yes. No, line five, I think it is, the word shell. <laughs> and I, I had a question whether in line 14 that should also be a name. Right. If you're changing line five. Other concerns. Yes, Senator Representative. Just follow up. The word shell should be yeah. more liberal. In other words, so you aren't required. Are you suggesting in your in your negotiations. I've been sitting here a long time. <laughs> yeah. But in, in your negotiations, if, if you have no choice, then you can't really negotiate. Representative Shen. Thank you, Senator. The other thing I included in my email to John is that. Um, if there is going to be a change to the waste stream or the operation or the operational ownership or you know, management, uh, what really has half the people in the room is what happens to their own facilities locally. You know, we've heard uh, from the folks up in uh, Tri Community okay. Landfill, for instance. No one wants their own landfill facilities to have to see waste diverted that was supporting their cash flow. Uh, and the same thing goes with the perk plants, et cetera. So this is a real tangled web we keep getting into. And before it, there is a change in waste stream or operational expectations, it really ought to come back to the committee for a review of how we're going to do this and really juggle all these balls. Should, would that be something we can include in the letter? Well, I, yeah, and I think also that's through SBO rulemaking, I mean, there's public hearings that if there's a change, George, correct? In the operating services agreement, in the public hearing, right? Right now, there is no operating services agreement. But there is no anticipation. Yeah, if we find somebody who is going to operate it for us. Uh, and I'll do it if you pay me enough. <laughs> I'm solo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> so represent I just want to follow up on what I just mentioned again about the waste treatment plan. Is a letter going to be strong enough to make sure that that happens so the, the town doesn't get left hanging? And there's a couple of concerns up there. The town pays 30000 in that range is now to operate it. If all of a sudden they had to go with the full operation cost, it might be very, very difficult for that town to face. The second thing, if a new buyer came in and decided they did not want them in the treatment plant, now the town would be facing several million dollars. So we've got to protect that asset. Do you think a letter is going to be sufficient? I don't want to have to put a lot of Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think it will be for us to, to make sure continue to have these discussions with not only the buyer but the town. We're going to have this open dialogue. I'm comfortable with that as long as we make sure we get that with it. That's all my biggest concern. And, and by doing it, um, some kind of a, putting in there some monthly update, if we all see something that really concerns us, then we'll get permission to do it. I mean, I think this is going into this the way we are. I think we're going to. I'll talk to leadership about making sure we have the opportunity when necessary to come in and have a conversation and right, try them in right away. Okay. Representative Vince. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, can we talk a little bit more just about, or again, about the fiscal note or what that fiscal note might look like? And is that already in development? Are folks already working on that? And how that will work with our budget? So the, the, the minimal fiscal note for as is, is um, roughly 250000 um, We've done several things. We've actually talked to appropriations and leadership about trying to figure out a way currently current budget. Um, I think there's also several departments here involved that can maybe somehow cobble together monies uh, to cover those costs. The 250 Yeah, it doesn't get, you know, get through on the budget. Long term, obviously, there's the closure costs are significantly higher. Would it have to be for two years? Would it have to be the 
budget. I mean, oh. is that 250 per right. year? Yeah, it would be for close to that. That's correct. Yeah, because if we hope that the cost right now might not be the 250,000, because we're going to take it over. Well, it could be, it could be 500,000. So you're, yeah, it's a bi biannual budget, so it have to be two times that. Representative Shen, have you done representatives? Yes. Thank you, Senator. Um, some of the Democrats did have a chance to meet and discuss this a little bit before the hearing, uh, before the work session. One of the concerns we raised and, um, was we really are going to be reluctant to see the resources for doing this coming out of the hide of the department, for instance, especially DEP, because we're really running into issues where they're underfunded now. They're going to be losing staff because of some of the retirement situations going on. Uh, they're already overpaying for OIT. Um, I don't know where the money would come from. Their general fund is already so squeezed anyway. Uh, we, we even had a preliminary conversation about can we negotiate some language in here that keeps this from coming out of the DEP's hide. Um, I, I chimed in. I didn't think that was really appropriate to put in the statute, but it is a really serious concern for us. So uh, wherever the money comes yeah, from, just make sure it's yeah. We can put that ceremony in the letter. I yeah. think that's something we do need to put in there because we've been very protective. And other than the F and all bill, <laughs> we've been very protective of uh, keeping a study from being dumped on that. Right. Which is the promise that Bob and I made. So I think we can. Yeah, yeah. I think what I'm asking is, please don't make me regret my vote. No, no there's you know there's other um, you know. There's this is a jobs initiative, so there's DECD, you know, we could potentially even look at CDBG. You know, there's, there's, I think there's a lot of rocks we're going to overturn and try to figure out a way to um, cover that cost. John has to leave in about two minutes, so. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to cut us short. So, I mean, but Daryl, Daryl's here, and uh, I know that John's going to do an introduction, and after he does his introduction, he can come back. So, Representative. Representative Parker, then Representative Shane. I guess I want to waste one not letting Bill stay. I want to make sure your fiscal, when you address this fiscal, you address that shortfall as well. Okay. Not just the, the numbers that you need to right. take the landfill, but you know, there could be a couple of $300,000 in that treatment plan as well. But we're trying to help this community. We don't want to settle in with it short term. Maybe long term things might change. But short term, maybe there's something wrong. Representative Shane. Yes. Thank you, Senator. Before you leave, John. Uh, just sort of a declaration of hope from <laughs> at least the Democrats on the committee. We understand what we're really doing is authorizing the governor to go forward and do a spreadsheet analysis and negotiation. We're really trusting the administration will do its best job possible of you know, doing something that has a net positive benefit to the state, even if it means taking on liability, that it's going to make us all hold our noses when we vote. Uh, well, I appreciate that, and, and rest assured uh, the governor is well aware of that, and, and um, as a Businessman who's done turnarounds, he's he wants to make sure that we're, we're doing this yeah. in the best interest of the state. And the other thing I guess what it offers a caution is, uh, whenever you create a new landfill of any kind or new capacity, there's a tendency to attract waste from out of state, and this is always such a huge yeah. argument. It's one that the administration would be wise to avoid uh, at all costs, unless they pay attention to Representative Deshane's bill. Yes, <laughs> then we, we talk about it. All right. Anything else? I, I would. I mean, if you're prepared, what I would maybe entertain is a motion, a vote, and then, oh, yes. Uh, I just, uh, something I'd spoken about the other day was the sovereign immunity. Oh, yes, that's right. Provision, and uh, I know that that was something that had been in the AG's office letter, and after discussion with you, I don't know whether you want. We don't need John to answer that question, so, but come back after you do your testimony, if you don't mind. So, can you put you in the hot seat some more, John? <laughs> I want to see well, how the old won't be. No, <laughs> depends with the all the people upstairs come down to visit. <laughs> Jerry, do you, there was a question about who yeah. wants it. <clears throat> who wants that? So <laughs> what do you need? Yeah, yeah. Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> Flip the coin. Good afternoon. Good uh, afternoon. I'm Bill Lovinson, I'm the AG's office. Uh, yeah, as I recall, we were before we talked about the provisions of the Juniper Bridge Landfill how to protect the state's sovereign immunity and close the indemnity provision. Sovereign immunity one, there's an argument to be made when the state enters into a contract to make them waiving its sovereign immunity. So make sure that only the legislature really can waive sovereign immunity, so I think it's important to put that that we're not that we're not waiving sovereign immunity by entering into this agreement. So we should put that into the actual legislation mm -hmm. itself, then we should yeah. that. Yeah. that would be Um, based on the discussion, the not resolve ought to pass as amended 
And with the, I'd like to see a review of the, the wedding before it is out. Uh, and also, as part of that motion, I'd just make sure that we do submit the letter. Can you second? Second. And what I'm going to suggest is if we go, let's not leave. Let's go through and just go by each one and give me the list of things you'd like to see included in the letter right now. So Susan can start to capture those and then think about it some more. The other things that come up, let's get it all together so that we have that letter so she clearly has got what the gist of what we want to do. I think I did mention for the merge of Yes, we'll probably have to put it first. It's probably a good idea. Any further discussion? Yes, go. Representative Welch. I, I just like, I'm, I'm going to vote for this, but I am so uncomfortable with the whole thing. And just the liability that we're putting on our state is huge. So I would just, you know, the governor's got to be thinking of the taxpayers. And I feel like we're doing a big bailout for this corporation, basically. And it's the workers. Who, and keeping those jobs are the thing that is, and, and for the towns of Milwaukee, <coughs> East Milwaukee, are really the only reason I'm going to be okay voting for this. Representative Harbaugh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would second that sentiment. And I would third it. Oh, <laughs> Representative Innes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I will fourth it, and I am so uncomfortable. I'm not going to be going for this today. I don't know what I'll be doing on the floor. I wish we had a lot more time. To, to go over this than two weeks. And I feel like this is a huge undertaking and a huge risk and a corporate bailout. I see in my case, it just comes down to the workers and, and having gone through there many times through Millinocket and on the way to my PhD plots and probably waving to Herbie, he was probably telling me I was number one as I drove through. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, and this is a case that I want to keep that town and paper making. That's really my goal. And what I'm really afraid of is that if we don't do this, is that the length will get closed, but so will the mills. And that's my big concern. And I just I feel comfortable with John and what John has told us. And I know Mr. Brown pretty well. I know where he lives. <laughs> and I know his wife even better, so that's, uh, but I'm serious, that's, I, that's why I, I feel, I understand it, I don't mean to make you feel rushed, I just sense, I have a sense of urgency on this one. Further comments? Yes, yes please, Representative Shane. Uh, obviously this is a huge can of worms, uh, which I think the administration understands, and you get, you know, in the negotiations and figuring out what the liabilities really are, what the closing costs, et cetera, and the operational costs going to be, it's going to take you a while to get that figured out, and to get the policy done right, but also the, just the whole policy about solid waste management in the state is a real can of worms right now. And so I do want the committee to be as involved as possible uh, because there's just a lot of minds to negotiate in this my field, more than most people realize. Uh, and you know, I would give us as a committee credit because we identified this early on, and that's why we said we'll sit back and take uh, sit on some of our bills because we need that policy. If we had that in hand, this decision would be very easy one way or the other because we knew which way we were going. So we don't have that. We're, we had the horse ahead of the cart, but the cart <laughs> caught off to us. Uh, but that's that's really where I am. And I, I just feel like that it, no, we'll, we'll make it work. We have to. We don't have a choice. We got 600 people who want to get back to work and, and make a paper. So yes, representatives. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, what's the procedure if for a minority report and the language of that? Do I have time? You would have to state what it is. That is. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Thank you. Further discussion? Okay. All in favor of resolve as, as we've discussed? done that what I'd like to do is right now there are things I want to go through if you don't mind just so we've all captured the concerns we want to have built into a letter so Ricky you have anything that you can think of uh, my biggest concerns on this whole issue is if the state gets stuck with the landfill covering the cost of covering everything mill disappears uh, I'm worried about the cost of the association as any recourse the state could take. Uh, to go along with what Representative Parker said a few minutes ago, as far as the Senate to keep so we can just do the pollution and water, wastewater, wastewater treatment plant, uh, 
Yes, it has assets. The mill also has assets, and I've been told a number of stories. I'm sorry I haven't attended all of them. But I wish there was some way we could have recourse to cover our costs if we end up getting stuck with the mills. This yeah. man. And just to help you a little bit because you weren't here, I think what we learned the other day, there's about $88 million worth of assets there, which doesn't meet the 5 to 1 ratio for the closing cost. So the, as many facilities that are LLCs, they have taken those assets, and that is the where the 7.3 or $17 million lies. So the concern is that if we don't do this, okay, so if the mill, in essence, doesn't work as we hope it does, then we do have the assets that we could sell in order to close the bill. Does that help you a little bit there? And that's really what it comes down to. <laughs> Talk to me when I speak. Oh, no, he's going to talk to you. He's going to take you. Oh, he took you to the woodshed. Huh? He's bigger than you are, Herbie. <laughs> Representative Inner. I did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Representative Parker. Uh, one of the comments I'm talking about is, and I think Rick is along the same line, is we don't want to put all those assets so that we're secondary in all of them. We want some asset that's tied over to us. So maybe the treatment plan might be the most effective one to do it because we could, in effect, deal with the landfill and help the community deal with its wastewater, even if everything else, else goes south. So I'd like to see that in hand so that we're not in a secondary position, we remain in a primary position only. And then if the whole thing should happen to fold up in the future, at least we've got that asset. Uh, I also agree with the corruption the Walsh's position. This is a precarious situation if you win, but if it's negotiated properly and given long term, not short term costs, because it's somehow dealing with it, but long term, I really think the funding is necessary to close this landfill probably could be generated. So we're not going to be looking to maybe taxpayer money for that. But we're going to be looking for taxpayer money on the shot end, no question about it, to 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 get through the interim. Do you have anything, any other? Ricky, you have something right at the list now? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Yes, uh, and he was thinking more along the same lines as I was. If this deal goes south and the mills don't open, uh, my concerns with the state's yet. Uh, I'd like to know, put it in this letter somehow, that we would put a hold on the properties, receive our funds up front before the stuff is sold. And I think it kind of fits with Representative Parker's suggestion, too. Thank you. I'll repeat that while you would hope you're on the wrong vision. But uh, what I'm saying, let's make sure we're in first position on some asset that's enough to protect us. And not be secondary. But we maybe can't stay in first position on everything because they have financial obligations. They can't meet if we're ahead of everybody. We cover our costs. Representative Menace, you have a question? I do, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Um, Susan, because that is an issue for many of us, the liability, the costs, should this deal not occur, is there language that we can, that can be used to say that we would want to have a hold on assets to have? Well, I mean, there is. You could put something in there. Um, I can't even off the top of my head, but something that would require in the office's negotiations, in the state's negotiations, to protect some sort of asset. Should that, would that go into the resolve, or would that go into the letter? Uh, well, either way. Uh, if it's in the resolve, then it would require in any negotiation that the state enters into to follow that. To follow that. Basically, as they're doing the negotiations on the purchase, that's right. The, with whoever it is, they would set, say that. If okay. it's in the letter, then you're expressing the committee's desire, not the legislature's requirement. Well, Representative, what? This, well, is there? Is there any way to do say, I mean, I'm assuming if the sale of this does not work out, the state is not obligated then to, to buy the landfill. I mean, so can, can we say we don't want the state to buy the landfill or take the landfill if, in fact, the sale itself isn't going to go through? I mean, we don't want to have the landfill and then 
the sale doesn't work. Right? Representative Parker. I might be able to address that because some of the wording that I asked for the interchange with Bill is said that they are authorized and it doesn't say they shall buy. Yeah. I would hope that the negotiations it would be proven enough to know that if the deal is going to fall through and how we guarantee that I'm not going to be asked, I don't know, but if the deal falls through, we don't end up with the landfill. Exactly. It's part of the negotiations. I know. I think and he's captured that by saying sh shall, shall. We may by saying if it's not going to go that way, and if that happens, then the assets do get used to, in fact, close the land, close the landfill. Well, right now, the way it's written, I believe that even if it's not tied to keeping the mill open, the state can still go ahead and purchase the landfill. The way that. Right, and that's why I'm raising the question, do we want to say that or do we really want to tie well, it, it to the sale? Doesn't it also say that if because of the words, putting the words in there, uh, may, is they also can walk away from the deal? That's, that's See, correct. So that's yeah, the opposite. Of what, that's what you're saying. So in other words, if this isn't working out, they can say, we tried. Right, yeah. but I just want to make sure that that's what they do. Yes, come on up, Mr. Brown. This is definitely the office of Daryl. Tell her So, so this is the B team now. So, uh, <laughs> Representative Walsh asked up a very important question. The part of the administration, um, uh, there is no intention that, that the state would even be interested in taking acquisition of the landfill until the negotiations are complete with a uh, potential buyer, uh, and that uh, we are assured that that buyer is going to operate that mill and that those jobs will be saved. Okay, thank you. And you're on record with that. <laughs> right. yeah, we got it, we all heard it. <laughs> why, yeah. why would we want it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Representative Shane. Thank you. you now that I have Daryl on the spot. Um, you, you heard my concern earlier is I don't want to create a bad situation with a brand new landfill that's all of a sudden running differently than we anticipated. Uh, and it's not just a matter of rulemaking a state planning office, it really is we probably were going to have to find somebody to operate the landfill as it currently exists just to, because George's not going to do it. <laughs> George spends most of his time down here. So someone's going to have to get hired to, to do this, and that's okay. I, I, that's nothing we have to meddle in. But if we want to create a commercial landfill operator who's now going to take waste streams that aren't currently anticipated, I th the committee really has to be part of that discussion. And we agree with that. Right, okay. Okay. Um, no, that, so yeah. we could add, Carol, the question that Representative Ennis okay. asked was, could we, and why don't you express what your, your, your concern was again? see what your comfort level is because of that so we can bring up maybe bring out a unanimous report well i think i don't have the thank you Mr. Chair. um i think myself and representative long have the exact same concern that if this if this doesn't go through and we've already purchased or if it's purchased in three months or six months it doesn't go through that we're still sitting here with the landfill and there's no recourse so how can we I mean, it, that clearly could be part of the negotiations that the administration is following through on, but I guess I'm just been like wanting to have more does strength in that. Does the yeah. language that Representative Parker suggested, though, help you with that? Where he's basically saying, okay, one, one, if the deal doesn't go through anyway, we have some recourse to get the $7 million. They've already got the money to close the fill. It's on their books. It's there. It's just in the form of assets. So they have to give us something there, ultimately, is my interpretation. Right. I may be wrong, but... Uh, and then the second part Can is, we clarify that first? Can yeah. Can, can my, my two friendly lawyers here clarify that? If, if we don't buy this thing and they, they, the deal falls through, do we have access to the $7 million versus the, via the sale of their assets? We would have a claim against those assets. Right. I don't know how they may otherwise be encumbered in ways that might restrict our ability to collect on that claim. But the fact that they, as far as IRS is concerned, is that they have that money, so doesn't that help our, our moving up on the list as far as getting the money is concerned? I, I just don't know that there's a guarantee because I don't have enough information. We would have a claim. 
They're required to provide it within 30 days. That's correct. They're required under the regulation to provide it within 30 days, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything given the information that we have available about their ability to follow through on that commitment. The regulation says one thing, their ability to comply with it under those circumstances where there's a demand made for that money to be produced within 30 days. I have no information about their ability to fulfill that. I guess then I think one of the things we're going to do is we're going to put legislation in next time that says you pay in 30 days or we're fining you 10 times the amount. I mean, I don't buy that. I mean, I can't imagine that we're sitting here saying that after 30 days, someone who just told me they have $88 million in assets aren't going to pay in 30 days. And if we say we can't get it from them, we got a problem and we need to fix that. I'm not saying that they're not going to. I'm saying that I don't have any ability to certify that those assets aren't encumbered in myriad other ways that wouldn't complicate our ability to collect on that claim. That's all I'm saying. I don't know where you're coming from with that, but what I don't understand, I've been involved in, not personally, but in trying to hold assets in foreclosure. This company has an obligation. The obligation has a requirement. The DEP has to send them a letter to confirm that notice they just gave us to put them on notice and declare that asset. Now, that asset would have priority over any future claims that occurred after the obligation was committed. And that obligation was committed several years ago, quite a few years ago, when they got that license to operate that landfill. Therefore, you'd have to be in a priority position. So we want to strengthen that. If we have to strengthen legislation, let's do it. But I don't see how anybody could argue around that because they have an obligation now which they've already notified us that they have not, they're not meeting. And if you remember our last meeting the other day, I said to a spoke-time DEP, put a letter up really quick to say you are not meeting your obligation, now address it. And that doesn't interfere with the governor's or the administration's negotiations because that's a hard and fast part of their current license. And they'd have to obligate to meet that. I don't see how a creditor could step in against an obligation that's existed for this length of time. Now, we might want to be real lax, let them get away with it, but I don't see how that could possibly occur if we're diligent about what we're doing. The only point that I'm trying to make is that I don't, we don't know what other obligations they may have and what priority those other obligations may have with respect to our claim. That's just information we don't have. And the question of priority is the important question. I think you're right about that. I've got to follow up a little bit more on that because right now they have not declared bankruptcy. Okay? Right now they have a violation or notice of the debt given to DEP that we're not meeting that commitment. Therefore, I think DEP would have to be very prudent and very quickly put a letter up to them and let them obligate their asset to the tune of $7 million or $10 million or whatever they need to do now prior to going into bankruptcy and insolvency. That's something separate from the negotiation. It should be actively being pursued now with the department and the department's attorneys. Then you've protected the asset. Then if they turn around and file bankruptcy at a future date, that asset is protected. It's already guaranteed in that reserve. So I think that's a step we have to take, independent of what the administration is negotiating. Well, I'm going to suggest that that be put into the letter so that they understand that as soon as it's an appropriate time that this letter of obligation be sent down so that we don't get in the middle of the negotiation and turn south because of that letter. I think we need to have that at some point that will be sent out. Other comments? Okay. Anything, questions for Daryl? Did Herbie have a question for you? Herbie, where are you? Herbie, just come over here. See, we don't play that way in this Tennessee. So come right here and sit down. Come here and sit down. This is not Bruce Bryant's committee. Even I let Nick Bennett ask questions without sending notes. So if you've got some concerns, help us. What else should we have in the letter? One thing else. I have to leave. I'll be back probably in 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. You got anything you want to add? Looks like you might still be here. Ah, probably. That's okay. Hopefully we're not. We may. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Herbie Clark, State Representative of the District of Virginia, West Coast, Milwaukee, and East Block and Midway. A lot of the things I've been really, and you've been talking about anyway, basically on the letter. To make that level with a little bit more authority for a statute or for a record, I'd like to see the chairs read it into the record in the House and the Senate. So if there's any 
history to be brought up, anything to be discussed over the years, at least they go back to the legislative record and have the history there. A lot of times you send out a letter, it gets lost in communication, yeah. nobody understands what took place. And I, I agree with everything that's being asked. There's a lot of questions to be asked, a lot of people got major concerns. We have to protect the assets of East Market, make sure that the wastewater is going to be intact through the letter or however you do it, because that town will not survive financially or any other ways if they don't have that land, uh, wastewater. So I'm kind of glad you want to protect the town of East Malacca. Even though you live there? No, I live in Malacca. Bet some people in East Malacca. I've been known to use landfill. Representative Nat, well, whatever. Go ahead, you have a question for Rep. Representative Harper. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, is, in your experience here, um, to me, one request is the letter on the DEP about the money, and then there's other conversation about what to put in another form of letter or resolution. Um, you've suggested one thing that the letter that we are might craft is read into the record. Would you be more comfortable if a lot of that detail was put in the resolution instead? I'm glad you asked that question. I'll give you a little history. I, I worked for that mill for 43 and a half years. I went through a bankruptcy. A lot of promises occur when a, banker, or a bankruptcy happens. And I can tell you, workers in that area, we got on the bottom of the pecking order. So a lot of times you got to watch how a bankruptcy occurs and where you're going to fall. I sent a letter to the AG's office a few weeks ago asking mm -hmm. them to put an injunction on those mills so they wouldn't be dismantled. You're going to have to do something to protect the assets, mm -hmm. to protect that debt of $7 million a figure, which they don't have mm -hmm. out there. I was told in a roundabout way to secure that landfill, it was going to be to decapitate the mill and use that money to pay a, a, a closing on the landfill. So whatever you do, if you think you're going to be number one on the pecking order, you may be on the bottom for the days over. And I also asked a question of this committee, and I don't know if you asked the AG's office, is there any other potential owner with any liability into that mill? Why well, ask that question? I'm being told there's a former company used to own that mill, was in there doing capping of the sewers, but nothing going to waste water because of their liability. There's a lot of yes, a lot of scenarios. I'll be the first one to tell you here, we need to take that landfill by the state to make sure there's a guarantee for a buyer to buy those mills. Without that, you're gonna have the smelling of the mill, you have 600 less employees working, making good wages and good benefits. So a lot of things in life we don't wanna do, but sometimes you have to do and pay the penance later. I wanna be, I appreciate what you said. I wanna be careful how much I encumber people in this resolve so the negotiations should go on. But help me with what you'd like to have. Perhaps some of those things should be captured in this letter. Like, do we need to know who the uh, other lien holders might be? Well, I was hoping that the AG's office at the last meeting would have done some research to find out who they are, if there's any out there. Everything I'm hearing is second hand, third hand, fourth hand. Like people who are working in the mill, seeing people down in the mill doing work and asking who they're working for, and they may say, don't use my quote, sorry, it's on the mic, GP or some other company might have owned the mill over time. I'm not so sure the AG can get into that details until right. there's a, you know, yeah. private information. You can't dig into that until there's an appropriate public issue to go with. Well, I have no saying the bill at the beginning of the session of whether it got passed into the committee on LLCs. We maybe know who some of these people are today. <laughs> yes, Representative Shane, I'm sorry. Thank you, Senator. And this may not even be for Representative Clark. It may be for the AG or anybody who can answer. But we, we get a lot of due process issues here. Uh, they're not in bankruptcy right now. They don't have to disclose anything. Uh, up until the, the letter of May 27th, I guess there was not even the, uh, the recognition that they may not be able to meet the current obligations uh, of DEP. Um, furthermore, if that's a matter of rule, according, they were meeting the obligation according to the rule. Uh, in order to change that, you'd actually have to change the rule. Uh, so. Uh, there may be some recourse as to what the company has to do to now satisfy the rules since they're, they've notified us they're not. But that's something that was going to take a period of time for both the department and the AG's office to even research and figure out what the recourse is. Uh, and we're not going to get that done. My myself. major objective is keep them out of bankruptcy. Okay. I don't want to see them in bankruptcy. I've been there before and I don't want to see it happen again. This time, the only thing you're going to have there is not stacks, not mortar, not bricks. You're going to have a pipeline. lot. Let me go back to Representative. Just don't feel lonely because you don't need to send notes. Back to Representative Innes, back to your question. Is it in some way we're able to put this asset concept, I mean, I'm still trying to figure out what language it may be, and I don't want, again, I don't want to encumber this. If we put that in the letter, 
that we want to have uh, two parts to it, the way I heard is one is the assets need to be tied to the waste treatment facility so that we continue to own that. And at the same time, in the event that, uh, the, well, the letter of obligation be sent when appropriate to notify them that uh, we want the, the assets, try to get an obligation as first choice, first whatever you call it, on uh, closing the landfill if necessary. I'm not sure where we can put that. I don't know if that helps you, and I don't know if I summarized it correctly. Yeah, at this point, I'm just going to stick on my report. Yeah, that's fine. It makes it easy for me, too. Yeah. <laughs> Representative Harlow, do you have something you'd like to add to the list? Um, I, I think it's probably a concern of everyone's, but just the idea that we've opened the door to state-owned landfills, and we've held off on that policy decision, and now we've opened the door. And I'm not really comfortable with that. There's a lot I'm not comfortable with in this bill, but maybe it's because um, my family is from a meltdown, and I understand that there really is, I want to see that mill stay open. So that's why I voted for it. But that's my major concern, is that we open the door for it. And that's, that's the issue that we've right. got to resolve next year about yeah. how we're going to handle it. <laughs> Representative Matt, do you have anything you'd like to add? It's okay to say no. Yes, but or pass. I need to, to pass for a minute. All right. Member said the shame. Nope, said it all. Okay. <laughs> Representative. Hamper. It's been all wrapped up with Long and uh, Clark. Represent what? Um, just want to make sure, um, Representative Duchesne brought it up, is that this doesn't, the annual operating expenses don't come out of the high of DEP. Ah, good point. Uh, uh, sure and know. then I covered my other concern about I would add not to that. buying it if, if, in fact, the sale doesn't go through. And I would add to that that the fiscal note needs to be recognized as a two year biennium. Because I think we keep talking about two hundred fifty thousand dollars is really five hundred thousand dollars, and then the other one I had is the meeting. You know, that our meeting of monthly updates to this committee as to what's going on, and that you know we we will, we, uh, if necessary, so that we can have a good dialogue. But we really want to keep it informed and so forth. Those are the ones I can represent. That it was some information for from Representative Parker and he's here so that was my hesitation a little bit. Um, on the wastewater treatment, um, if on the long run the mill is not working and the waste doesn't go in there, I'm concerned from what he said like a retrofitting because the volume is less and who's going to pay that cost and so that was a thought that I kind of got from over here in some of this. So that would be in the wastewater treatment. I mean, right now they're probably only treating about two million gallons a, a year. I can give you the uh, phone number for the gentleman of East Milwaukee who takes care of that for the town of East Milwaukee. It may give you more numbers, more facts on that. Also, we have a selectman from East Milwaukee here, also, Mark Marson. Mark, come on up. Come on up. Yeah, it's okay. Herbie doesn't live in your town, so you can ignore him. <laughs> Related to half the town. <laughs> These are calls I got to present here. Wow. Thank pink you. Slip. Maybe they give it you your pink slip. <laughs> yeah, really. I got one before. Not calling us, they're calling you. Wouldn't be the first one. Yeah. Thanks. Maybe you can help us a little bit with this. Uh, the, uh, the wastewater, uh, we've looked at, we actually have a plan with the DEP in, in the works. Uh, <clears throat> we're restricted. Uh, we don't have any land to put our secondary treatment on. Uh, that was going to be a stumbling block. Uh, we. Um, as you said, the lack of water going through, the flow slows down and we don't aerate it. There's going to be uh, the anaerobic bacteria will stop growing and we'll have an awful stench. Uh, there are probably ways to retrofit it, but uh, this is where the, the mill hasn't really been very receptive to our request on acquiring land. And it was only going to be about a, not only, about a million dollars to retrofit it with a smaller tank. Uh, the secondary treatment, but um, I guess the other thing too I want to stress to everybody is that uh, this is about jobs. This, this, with what you're doing in, in facilitating this buy, this has been a stumbling block for so long. And if you look at the yearly, I mean, you're talking about 17 million. You're talking about 44 million indirectly. It's going to affect Bangor, Lincoln, everywhere. That's a whole area. Um, and to tell you the truth, I think you guys would end up getting this landfill. The state would get it, whether you now or later. The plus part of this is that you're going to have it. Um, 
you're going to have in, in from what we're hearing and, and let's hope there are potential buyers that are willing to invest with deep pockets uh, God forbid if Meritor partners had taken it uh, they didn't have deep enough pockets to run the mill for a year or so uh, <clears throat> and I can give you the number of the uh, I think you answered my question because my question okay is it if if there are no more wastes coming from the mill you're going to have to retrofit the waste treatment facility to treat about a million gallons a day or thereabouts. If there are wastes coming from the mill, your issue about secondary treatment and so forth won't be a problem. No, the, the, the waste water from the mill doesn't go through East Bowl Market Plan. East Bowl Market doesn't even have a wastewater license. This marriage it was done in 1983 when East Bowl Market built the, the wastewater treatment it was never anybody's dream that the mill wouldn't be there again and the operating cost for per year we just got doing our budgets is 31,000 our share of the aeration basin uh, their wastewater that comes out of the mill goes through their primary and secondary and aeration we were looking at and we had, had accepted uh, Katarn Paper and Meritor Partners on taking all of their sanitary storage through our waste treatment plant, which we could do very easily. And that way, uh, you take the septic bacteria out of the sludge, they wouldn't have any problem getting rid of their their, weight, their waste. And, and essentially, the mill doesn't need a landfill to operate anymore. For years and years, if you look the amount of volume of wood and stuff that was put there, and now they have it down to a fine science where what they don't use, they burn, and what they don't burn, they spread in fields and sell to people. Uh, I don't think it's really a, a liability uh, that the mill is going to have to ever have again. So, but let me go back to your waste treatment. Is it you, the $30,000 in your budget was to buy part of their aeration basin so you could aerate your material before it was discharged to the river? Right. So, if for some reason the mill didn't come back up again, you still would need that aeration in order to finally treat, finish, finish treatment. If they shut that down, uh, uh, we were looking at, we had been told by a few of the operators that if that was, uh, if we just power it for four hours a day, it probably would keep, would be all right. Of course, there was all kinds of other options too. What we were looking at is making these big lagoons smaller, whether we're filling in on the side to put a liner in, uh, but that's probably a heck of a lot more expensive than a million dollar retrofit. And again, we didn't have any land to do this on. That, that whole area, that whole 300 acres was owned by Katarin Vapor. Uh, and we didn't have any other, we had no, we still have no option. So would it be appropriate to put in the letter that as they're doing these negotiations, is it worth to have some kind of clauses in there to recognize these Millinockets need what we waste treatment and possible land and so forth, just some things that they need to take into consideration. Would that be helpful? I, I one other question too for the town of East Bowl Rock is if if we take off if you folks take off to the sea and this landfill is operated in East Bowl Market by a consular or a third party, another party, which the state's not gonna run, we know that, but most other communities have a hosting fee um, for waste coming in. Is that something that should be working could be worked in now or is that in the acquisition? You want to answer or is that, that much better than I? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. You'll not you know, we're looking to get rich, but I mean there would be some wear and tear in our community with the trucks coming through and, and uh, I have a quick two part answer. The first part is I don't really know where the waste is going to come from and we don't want it to come from out of state. So the chances of there actually being that operation is unlikely. But if it were to happen, yeah there'd be post community benefit. Uh, there already is in the statute title 38 uh, at least five or four it's soon to be five categories for which you'd be compensated for being the host community and that would be working there any agreement to operate the landfill commercially so uh, there'd be something here for you okay you know and you i guess so please here, 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 here. yes is when i first started looking through these reports that i got from paula clark and at that time here I was with the dep uh, it amazed me in the landfill closure letter that was noted and it was signed by Mike Ryder, the head of operations, 
that, that $7.7 .7 million that Sagi and Maha had said would cost to close the landfill, they had 10 times that mass yet. It's less than a year ago. And here we were told in East Pole Market that the mill was worth a dollar and there was nothing there. And you want to, if you want to talk conspiracy or whatever, but the, uh, the value of those communities before everything was split up, you had the dams, you had the land, and if those mills weren't there, this company Brookfield, if people are concerned or getting away with this, would be making millions and millions of dollars selling power. And those dams were put in for the town of East Bowl uh, which is another issue when I'm getting off track, I'm sure. So, I mean, it's, it's part of the, the ability to set up a limited partnership. Right. In your case, they separated in the mill that I used to work at, we kept them all together under the partnership. So we still have the four hydros through there. They just decided to spin them off differently. They did the same up the road to New Page, and they spun them off differently. Questions? Anything else that you'd like to see in a letter? Susan, how are you doing? You good? Sure. You want to just go through what you got, and then we can mill on it, and um, mill on it? I just got that. That was good. Oh, no, knock on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one as bad as you. No, knock on it. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to let change in the waste streams and everything that goes around that, then the committee needs to know about that, or has any plan for that. Um, the concern that money's not all coming out of DEP. Um, the out of state waste issue, and I think that's tied to the change in waste streams. regarding the treatment plan and trying to keep that in a primary uh, state in a primary position uh, regarding the assets. I get the letter of obligation to being sent at when, when appropriate. So that would be. And some, some of this is Certainly, when we get it till it's finalized, we'll read it into the record as it comes up. Okay, most important thing now we have to decide is when we're going to have lunch together. It's <laughs> <laughs> absolutely essential for this committee. I got three bottles of wine in the drawer there. Oh, so you so you do know we worked on the chemical mingling agreement. I think so. Um, do we have do we want to have it brought in and just be here? I did recommend it on Poland. We've had Because it makes it easier for all of us because we all don't have to worry about when we get out, we get out, we just go down and have lunch. So does that work? Yeah, what we can do, are we, are we having Thai food? Is that what we decided? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> 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 what we can do is we can look at the menu and we can check in my five or six or six boxes each and then uh, just have Chris check off what you want and order it and go. Okay, you want to shoot the budget? 